Dude starts growling and acting weird in 1863 Mississippi and he's not instantly shot? I call bullshit. Before we begin, I do realize I'm wearing Marvel items and I am reviewing a DC show. I just got back from seeing Doctor Strange, so you're gonna have to forgive my hate crime for, for one day. So jumping right in, goddamn them for still teasing us about Barry's message, except now we know some sort of war is coming, which is definitely going to tie into the crossover between all the shows. Ray being benched this episode made me sad, but it's understandable. And you know, despite that, despite being benched and feeling down about that, he still made the entire team sandwiches. Can that man get any sweeter? And then Sarah was still a douche to him. I feel like everyone that's mean to Ray from here on out should instantly be flogged. And he was even giving inspirational speeches this episode and helping people be brave. But then Mick gave him the cold gun. And I'm still not sure how I feel about Ray having the cold gun, but I'd imagine we're getting wacky accidents with it, so maybe it won't be so bad. And I do approve of a Mick-Ray team up. What will Snart think when he sees this? I kind of feel like Jefferson took the stay on board thing a bit wrong. You think I can't handle it? No, what he was trying to get at is the United States was a racist douchebag nation. Well, more racist at the time. Douchebag nation at that point. And why endanger yourself because of unenlightened swine? It just seemed like a macho man jumping to conclusions thing to assume it was just because he couldn't handle it. I mean, if they went to December 1937 Nanking, I would refuse as a woman to get off the ship, and I would tell any other woman on that ship, regardless of her skin color or her culture or where she comes from, you're also not getting off that ship. And it would have nothing to do with me thinking women couldn't handle it. It just wouldn't be a good idea. I kind of like when they were in 1863 at first and they were worried about Vixen doing something to alter history. Then they change into Firestorm, which I'm sure is worse than her just running after them as a normal person. But then we got zombies, so this episode automatically went up several points. I don't say this often for shows that aren't centered around zombies. Usually shows that don't feature zombies on a regular basis, they can kind of muck it up or overdo it. They actually, the zombies in this episode were really well done and actually added to the plot quite a bit. Mick on the ship as a zombie was freaky and I really enjoyed seeing Ray and Stein team up. And I think in general this season so far, they're doing a really good job of showing us different team members teaming up or pairing off and going to do something and allowing us to see their dynamic and how they work together and their little quirks and what personality traits they bring out in each other. Also, I wanna point out in a very non-aggressive way for a historian, Haywood sometimes is really bad with numbers. We're a couple hundred years away from gender equality. What? I guess it's time to turn in my vagina because apparently equality between genders isn't going to happen for another 47 years. At least Sarah called him out on that though. But he did get the zombie word thing right. Even though the word zombie did exist during that time, it didn't really come to the USA and get used until the early 1900s. Also, poor Haywood. I understand him completely with saying how he doesn't understand why people don't enjoy his fun facts because I'm always sharing studies and fun facts with people and little bits of information and nobody seems to find them fun. And I'm really sad that I have to bring this up again, but I think we should start a counter for the smart guy that is going to use his or her smarts to talk to someone and then fucks it up so the thug and or less intelligent character has to talk and save them. It is seriously a major thing in this show. Also, let's talk about those zombies on top of Haywood before he lit the boom boom. Honestly, none of those zombies got a bite in. It took him six seconds to transform when they were on top of him. I've taken much less time to bite someone. I call shenanigans. Best line of the episode, I would say, was Stein saying, oh no, please don't be dead, Raymond. And then saying, but if you are dead, please stay dead. And then him congratulating him on not being dead. Oh, you're just unconscious. Well done. You're commending someone for not dying. Amazing. I'm definitely ranking this as my favorite episode of this season so far, but how would you rank this episode? What did you like? What did you dislike? Let me know in the comment section below. Besides that, please like this video, subscribe, and come back for more TV reviews every week.